Hey guys, welcome back to John's Watch. Today I'm taking a look at a new visual novel game called Ace Academy. It's developed and published by Pixel Fade Studio, and it's currently in early access on Steam. It was released on September 3rd, 2015. The trigger price is $27.99 Canadian or $24.99 US. And this title screen has like the greatest music I've ever heard. It is really awesome music, and I've just been sitting here listening to it for a while. Um, Eventually, you'll be able to go to the music room and probably just listen to it, but that is under construction right now. Like I said, it is in early access currently. But Ace Academy is a slice-of-life visual novel, which means there's not, you know, evil magic witches trying to take over the world. That seems to be a common theme in a lot of visual novels. Um, but it is, uh, it's got it's got elements of dating sims, and it is also set in what appears to be like a robot high school. There's girls who run around in giant robots and it sounds fantastic uh, it is fully voiced I've got fully voiced on right now um, because it looks like there's a lot of characters and I can't do that many characters <laughs> so I'm just gonna hop right into it if there's not enough for me to do uh, I will turn off the the voice stuff which is right here I've got it enabled right now let's just start it up here we go Welcome to Ace Academy! Thank you. Let's get a few things set up for you. Okay, great. Rollback function. So it looks like you actually do get to set up your, your own character. So I called myself John uh, John Johnson. And I can set up... Oh, my, my, my first trait. We'll go for intelligent, obviously. That sounds like me, you know? That's it. Good luck at Ace Academy. Thank you very much. Attention passengers. Oh, oh this is great. We will be arriving at our destination shortly. Please ensure you have all your belongings prior to exiting. This is great. I think it is fully voiced already. In early access, that's crazy. And I get to voice myself, I guess. That's perfect. This is like the perfect game. Uh? Something strikes my cheek, oh no. I turn away from the window and see a small hand beside me. Who would do such a thing? Look at this train. Ah, it's Nikki. Classic Nikki. I glanced at her sleeping form. She was always a bit of a restless sleeper. I move her hand back to her side. Not as gently as I could have done it. We're almost there. She may as well wake up. Boop. Oh, I need to turn that text. Text moving. Text speed down a little bit. It's, default is max, interestingly. I like it quite quite high up there. But uh, that was a bit too... A bit too fast for me. She stirs and stretches with a wide yawn, hitting me in the face again. That one she must have done on purpose. Oh, Blink. hey bro. Looks like I dozed off there. Did you sleep well? It's my sister, it's Nikki. Uh... <laughs> what is this sleep you speak of? I couldn't sleep. Why not? I'm pretty sure there was a bear sleeping near me. At least that's what it sounded like. Her eyes grow wide. She looks very shocked at that. Absolutely. Honestly, I'm surprised it didn't wake you. You're joking, right? Do I really snore? Totally. How can such a small person like you make such a loud noise? Oh my god. I can never show my face in public again. Long rides are going to feel even longer if I can't nap. And what about sleepovers? Can I even get a boyfriend? Just like listen to your, your iPod or something. Or your Spotify premium. Available from the link below. No, it's not. <laughs> I wish I was sponsored by Spotify. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face any longer and burst out laughing. Nah, you're fine, sis. It was just the guy behind us. Ow. She hits me in the arm. That is not funny. It is kind of funny. But I can see the smile threatening to escape her lips. Sun shines in my eyes, catching my attention. The sky is ablaze with deep reds and orange as the sun creeps towards its reflection on the glittering ocean. A soft breeze ripples the trees behind the coast, beyond the coast. The leaves seem to wave goodbye to us as we race past. Doesn't it look like something out of a fairy tale? There's a smile on her lips, but her warm eyes search my own. After a moment, she looks down and slinks back into her chair. You know, you, you didn't have to come too. You were already in your first year at CINY, and, well, you didn't have to come too. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> See you later. Uh, that's what big brothers are for, though, Nikos. After everything that's happened, we're all we've got left. I wouldn't be a very good big brother if I let you move here alone. She sighs, but a smile plays at her lips. How did I know you were going to say something like that? Because you wrote the game. Ooh. Oh. We have arrived at Izokaze Station. Please stand clear of the doors. Okay. We're still sitting, though, I think. I think we're good. Oh, that's our stop. Come on. God, this is like the perfect game to Let's Play, seriously. There's not like as much talking as other visual novel games I've done, which is good because those can like just wipe you out if you record enough of this. But uh, this is nice, you know? And then you don't have to listen to my terrible voices. <laughs> as we exit the train, I'm bombarded with a cacophony of noise. A businessman walks briskly past, talking sternly on his phone, while a nearby mother tries in vain to soothe her screaming child. A group of older women sneak quick glances at us and whisper amongst themselves. Every so often they burst into laughter. Nikki eagerly steps off the train and breathes in the cool air. <sighs> That's more like it. Oh, she's pleased. She glances back at me and puts her hands on her hips. Hurry up, slowpoke! Slow. Struggling the weight of both of our luggage, I stumble off the train. The suitcases fall ungracefully beside me onto the platform. It's a good thing there's nothing fragile in here. Offering to carry both of our bags no longer seems like such a good idea. Great. Fantastic. Wonderful. <laughs> I take a moment to stretch my burning limbs. You see Uncle Kaito yet? Mm, not yet. When were we supposed to meet him? I like how, even though I gave her a very American last name, she already has an American or a Western first name. But we have an Uncle Kaito? <laughs> Is that uncle by blood? <laughs> Oof. Uh, 6.30ish. Looks like he's running a bit late. <laughs> Typical Uncle Kaito. Probably traffic, though. After a few minutes of scanning, a familiar face appears out of the crowd. Oh, that's Uncle Kaito. Kaito. Hello, Kaito. His face splits in a wide grin. Welcome to Japan! Oh my god, amazing! <laughs> I think he giggles at Kaito's English. This is amazing. <laughs> oh my god, you can't say hero. Uh, WTF? Uh, why are you two talking like that? What do you mean? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, this is vaguely racist. Stop. Stop what, Nichan? Oh, Nichan. Seriously. Nikki and Kaito burst out laughing. There's no way I'm actually related to these two. Oh my god. That's embarrassing. A loud grumble interrupts us. <laughs> Sorry. Uncle Kaito roars with laughter. Let's get some food in you. He sounds very, very amused right there. We're in a car. We're driving off to McDonald's. Dot, dot, dot. Welcome home. Oh, thank you. Uh, arigato. <gasps> Holy shit, look at this place. This place is the opposite of the cozy yet cramped apartment I expected. Instead, I feel like I've just walked into the cover of a home decor magazine. It looks fantastic. Look at that TV. And that really well-positioned couch over there. <laughs> you guys hungry? Dinner should be here soon. Did you order KFC? Sweet. What are we having? Please be KFC. Well, I figured it'd be good to expose you to some true Japanese cuisine. Not KFC. That's only for Christmas, obviously. Or is it New Year's? No, I think it's Christmas. Which is? Sushi, of course. Ah. 100% bona fide nigiru sushi tomaki sushi. Holy shit. At one point, I would have known what those meant. But now I don't. <laughs> sushi! Great, I love sushi. I really do like sushi. I hated it, like, the first time I tried it when I was younger. It's just something you, you grow into, I guess. Well, I think a lot of people do like it the first time they have it. I like sushi now, though. It's great. Kaito grins. Your American sushi can't even begin to compare to the authentic stuff. That is probably true, actually. I took a... I took a Japanese culture course in my very last semester at university, and our first, like, field trip kind of thing was we got authentic Japanese bento boxes, 
and there was so much food in them, and they were so good. But yeah, it was nothing like uh, the stuff I've had, like the the Western style. By the way, your things came in a few days ago. I put them in your rooms. Why don't you two go upstairs and start unpacking while I get dinner ready? Sounds good. Nikki nods and we head upstairs together. Dot dot dot. Oh, look at my room. Look at that fucking TV. And look at those fancy shelves. I like it. Hallway upstairs is narrower than the one back home, but Kaito's house is not small. Nikki heads into the first room on the right. My room is right beside hers, and Kaito's is further down the hall. Even with all the boxes lying around, I'm surprised by how spacious my room is. It might even be larger than my dorm room at C-I-N-Y. I head over to the wall and sit on the edge of my bed. Thank goodness Kaido had the beds made before we arrive. I don't even remember which box holds my linens. Maybe it's this one? I pull the nearest box towards me and rip open the top. Just close in here. May as well start putting some of this away though. I just emptied the box when Kaito's voice echoes from downstairs. Hey guys, fruits here! Oh my god, they actually put like an echo effect on it. I am very, very impressed by like A the fact that it is voice voice acted. Uh, it seems to be fully voice acted. And and the quality of it. Like the little touches. Like like the echo there. I was planning if if they didn't put the echo on, I was gonna add it myself in post, but that's amazing. Really impressed so far. After dinner. <laughs> I'm stuffed. <laughs> it's gotta be om nom nom. I eagerly reach for more, even after both Nikki and Kaito have put down their chopsticks. You weren't kidding about liking sushi. Damn right, Kaito. You should see him at an all-you-can-eat buffet. It's like watching a vacuum cleaner. If vacuum cleaners could eat. Uh, have you ever seen Teletubbies? Actually, I don't think Nunu eats in that. He just slurps up their tubby custard after they're done with it. Sometimes before they're done with it. <sighs> what a bastard. I finish the last piece and heave a satisfied sigh. So, what's the verdict on authentic sushi? Hmm... It's not bad. Not bad. He says with a mouthful of sushi and rice all over his face. It's not bad. <laughs> Nikki and Kaito seem amused as I brush away the rice on my face. Kaito leans back in his chair, resting his hands behind his head. So, what was the INY like? Oh, the usual. Exams, messy dorm room, part-time job. And you still managed to save enough money to buy yourself a bike. You need a bike in Japan, you know. True. Could have bought it sooner if maintaining a gear wasn't such a money sink. A gear? Oh, you're still using your original gear? Is it anything like a nerve gear? It's probably not, it's probably just a giant robot. Yep. Is it getting you trouble? You should probably replace it if it needs that many fixes. How much money do you think I have, Uncle Kaito? Jesus Christ. Everyone says that, but when I think about all the time I spent with Dad, I'm not ready to put those memories aside, especially now that they can never be replaced. Oh. Besides, Dad was great at what he did. I know there's still plenty of fight left in that mech. I guess, but Dad and I did work on it together. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into it. I'm not quite ready to give up on all that hard work. It's true. Especially that one time when Butterfingers here dropped the torch. Remember that? There was a lot of blood. Nikki! She smiles sweetly at me. What? I'm just backing you up, big bro. Huh. <sighs> You're right. Uncle Kaito laughs. I understand. It should be arriving at the academy any day now. All you'll have to do is present the proper ID to claim. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Uncle Kaito jumps to his feet and grabs something off a nearby table. He turns with a packet of papers, which he hands to Nikki. Here are your transfer papers. They're already filled out, and all the docs you need are in there. All you have to do is hand this to the headmaster first thing tomorrow morning. Holy shit, we moved, like, the evening before Nikki's starting school. As you look outside, actually it's more than evening. That looks like 10 p.m. pretty much. Wow, they weren't very well prepared, were they? Okay, thanks Uncle. Here. He hands each of us a SIM card. Put these SIM cards into your phones. I've already added credit to them to start you off. Fucking hell, Uncle Kaito is top lad. I want to go stay with Uncle Kaito now. <laughs> Kaito looks over at me. And you took care of your transfer stuff? I nod. Nice. Nice touch. Great. 
I pop the new SIM card into my phone. After a moment of waiting, the phone boots up to an empty contacts list. I quickly exchange numbers with Nikki and Uncle Kaito. I can add the rest of my old con contacts later. Don't hesitate to call me if you need anything. We won't. Conversation lulls into a silence. Hey Nikki, we should probably unpack a bit before the jet lag takes over. Where did we come from? Weren't we on a train? Good idea. Alright. Don't stay up too late though. You both have a long day ahead of you tomorrow. Maybe we actually did come from America? In which case, why the hell would we not have planned for jet lag as well? <laughs> we excuse ourselves from the table and head upstairs. Alright, time to unpack. Oh, look at that. Oh, I brought my computer with me. Nice. I managed to put most of my things away before I'm interrupted. You done unpacking yet? Nikki seems tense. Although there's a small smile on her lips, her brows are furrowed in worry. Just about. What about you? Almost. But hey, what do you think about this whole uniform thing? It's kind of weird, isn't it? She shifts uncomfortably from one foot to the other. That is a weird-ass uniform. It looks a lot like pajamas. That would be really weird to say to your sister. Uh, I think it's a great idea. It'd be a nice change. And that way we won't have to worry about mismatched socks or anything like that. She giggles. <laughs> Maybe that's something that happens to you, but my socks always match. Well, look who's Miss Perfect Sock Girl. Oh, I almost forgot. What kind of uniform do you have to wear anyway? I mean, mine's normal, but you're going to ACE Academy. Oh, it's not Ace Academy. I think I'll still call it Ace Academy. <laughs> I shrug. Dress code says something about distinguishing the students in the pilot program from the rest of the student body. The pilots wear teal markings to indicate their program. Ooh, that sounds good. You transferred directly into their pilot program, right? Yep. I heard that program's hard to get into, but I never doubted you. I hope they're ready for you because you're going to kick butt. Yeah, damn right. Thanks, sis. Clock on my nightstand flashes 11 p.m. I think it's probably time to go to bed now. What? Already? It's 11, Jesus Christ. I gently heard her out of my room. Get out! It's not that late. Come on. You don't want to be falling asleep in class now, do you? She pouts, and I'm worried she'll continue to argue, but she just mumbles something incoherent and turns towards her room. Good night. Night. I return to my mess of boxes and try to organize them into something resembling a neat pile. As I reach for the last box, a picture frame falls to the ground with a loud clatter. My heart tightens in my chest as I snatch it up and inspect it for any fractures. Luckily, it's unharmed. Oh, that's me! I look like a boss. I run my finger over our smiling faces. Me, Nikki, Mom, Dad. We were at the fair and Nikki wanted to ride the roller coaster. Okay, so it looks like the mom's probably Japanese and the dad's like the American one. I remember Mom and I just had just argued over something stupid before the picture was taken. But you'd never be able to tell from this photo. Mom always looked so poised and together. I place the frame beside my computer, trying to ignore the lump in my throat. I lay on my bed and close my eyes, but my thoughts refuse to quiet. That is definitely an iPhone right there. <laughs> Look at the like the little square button. And iPhones, you can't really take the SIM card out very easily. <laughs> Eventually, my exhaustion takes over and I fall asleep among a tangle of questions and what ifs running through my mind. Oh, morning. Oh, nice. Must be his alarm. Oh, what? Soft sunlight filters through my window, warming my cheek. The distant melody of birdsong is nearly drowned out by the annoying blare of my alarm. You know, badass blare of my alarm. I roll away from the window and see 7am flash on my clock. Oh, that can't be right, can it? Yes, it can. Time to get up, bitch. I turn off the alarm. I've never been a morning person, but I actually don't feel as tired as I normally would. I'm even feeling kind of energized. Jet lag works in mysterious ways, I guess. 
At least I won't be late for my first day. Damn, that is bright for 7 a.m. <laughs> Pushing myself out of bed, I automatically begin my morning ritual. Without thinking, I grab my jeans and have them halfway up my legs before I notice the uniform slung over my chair. Crap. This will take some getting used to. Just don't put your jeans out. <laughs> I slip off my pants and grab my uniform. I'll admit, as far as uniforms go, these aren't that bad. They're a little too flashy for my tastes and not at all what I was expecting, but the cut is flattering and teal stripes look pretty cool. I face the mirror to fix my tie. The knot could be better, but there haven't been many opportunities in which I've needed to wear a tie. I still look damn good, which is all that matters. Damn right you do, John. After a quick check to make sure I have all my things, I head downstairs. Nice stair noise. I soon arrive in the kitchen, eager to begin my day. Waking up successfully at this hour feels kind of like a big accomplishment. Nikki stifles a yawn as she sets down a plate of eggs and toast. Suddenly, I don't feel so accomplished. <laughs> did, did you make one for me too? <laughs> she blinks in surprise and it takes a moment for her to respond. As a matter of fact, I did. Holy shit, you did? She grins and places another plate down on the table. Best sister Thank ever. You, bro. Waking up bright and early. You're taking starting over to the next level. Hey, I try. Where's Uncle Kaido? He already left for work, so we'll have to lock up when we leave. I nod, and she sidles over to me, wearing a playful look. In her white shirt and plaid skirt, she has a little twirl and looks expectantly at me. So? Um... Let's go for the only one that's not kind of incesty. <laughs> I stare blankly at her. So what? She rolls her eyes, but her voice is still sickly sweet. Don't you notice anything different about me today? You're not wearing your glasses, are you? <laughs> God. Oh, Nikki. Hmm. Did she get a haircut? No. Dyed her hair? No. New style? Uh, maybe? Not sure. Should I go with that? Tap, tap. Nikki taps her foot, her smile faltering. I need to say something soon. I like what you did with your hair? No. Ah, oh, shit. Shoot. Okay. What about our eyes? Colored contacts? No, still amber. Uh. Ah! It's your ridiculous clothes! Nikki's eyes widen. She kind of looks like she got the wind knocked out of her. I'm right, aren't I? Ridiculous! Uh, no, of course not. I mean, it's a weird choice, but if you're going for the naughty schoolgirl look, then you've got it down. Don't say that to your sister, Jesus Christ. A weird choice? This is my uniform, you jerk. I didn't choose to wear this. Oh, right, of course. That explains a lot. Uniforms. Like what I'm wearing now, except not at all. Suddenly, my uniform doesn't seem too bad. It's quite a reserved uniform, to be honest. The shirt is, at least. Ha. <laughs> Oh, did I say ridiculous? I meant great. You look good. Ugh, forget it. Finish your cold toast. We're going to be late. Whoops. We finish our meal in silence, with Nikki occasionally shooting hurried glances my way. I wolf down my food and gather my stuff, then meet Nikki by the door. How are you going to get to the academy? My motorcycle, obviously. Oh, it wasn't a bicycle, it was a motorcycle. Oh, you don't need a permit then? I remember you were worrying about that. Permit? Shit, I completely forgot. I'll need a parking permit for my bike, but they should have visitor parking which I can use if I can find a spot. So what should I do? Should I take the mo motorcycle anyway and hope for the best? Or should I take the bus today and take my, my bike once I've gotten my permit? Well, let's play it safe and take that bus. You're right, I'll take the bus today. I need to sort out my parking situation before taking my bike. Nikki nods in affirmation. Which bus will you be taking? Uh, the line that heads to the south side of the city? She pouts. Aww, I'm taking the one going west. That's not at the same intersection, is it? No, I don't think so. Oh. Well, at least it'll help you get familiar with the city. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, damn right. I'll see you later then. Have a good time at school, okay? Sure. 
she beams at me. Alright, we're off on our own. Cars whip by as I approach the bus shelter. There are a few people waiting. I plunge my hands into my pocket and lean against the shelter to wait. Sharp squeal of brakes announces the bus's arrival. A few people trickle off the bus and I fumble in my bag for my ID. As I enter, I tap my ID on the scanner, which responds with an affirmative beep. Without waiting for me to find a seat, the bus jerks to a start, nearly knocking me over. There aren't too many free seats available, so I stumble unsteadily towards the back of the bus. As I glance around, I notice that a majority of passengers are wearing Ace Academy uniforms. That's comforting, I suppose. There's a free seat beside a girl my age. Oh ho ho. Well, let's date the crap out of her. She stares intently out the window and sits with her back uncomfortably straight. Her uniform lacks teal stripes. I guess she's not a pilot. She seems pretty cute, so I wonder why there's an empty seat beside her. Maybe she's not that friendly? Eh, I'll take my chances. It'd be nice to know at least one person from Ace Academy. I fall ungracefully into the seat beside her. We sit in silence as I muster the courage to speak with her. Eventually, she shifts uncomfortably under my gaze and I clear my throat. <clears throat> um, you go to Ace Academy too? I mentally slap myself for choosing such an idiotic question. Obviously she does. That was one of the first things I noticed. To my surprise though, she smiles warmly at me. Yes, I do. She gestures at my uniform. You're in the pilot program? I heard it's very competitive and difficult to get into. Uh, just needs hard work. I think anyone can make it as long as they try. She gives me a polite smile. Right, I didn't catch which program you're in. Or your name for that matter. I'm John Johnson. <laughs> I'm Yuna. Yuna Misaki. I'm studying PHPT. I'm studying... <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> Pilot health and physiotherapy. Ah. Uh, before I can ask anything else, the bus grinds to a stop. Ace Academy. Oh sweet, we're there already. Look at this fancy school. I hop off the bus in Unifola's suit. The roar of the departing bus does not dampen the cacophony of student chatter. Una pulls out her phone and checks her schedule. Let's find out where her class is. So, what's your first class? Introduction to psychology. Oh boy. Psychology? Mental health is just as important as physical health. That class is... She points over her shoulder towards a towering building in the distance. All the way over there. What class do you have? What class do I have? I check my own phone. Piloting 101. Oh, you're first year? No, second. Credit wasn't accepted when I transferred. Thanks. Well, if there's anything you need help with, or if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I pretty much know this campus inside out. Alright, give us your number. I'm sure we can figure that out by ourselves. Uh, well, let's talk to her, I suppose. A thought dawns on me. Actually, do you know where I can get a parking permit? I do. I can take you there now, actually, since I have some time before class starts. Great. That helps a lot. Thanks. Of course. Follow me. You know, weaves through the throng of students and it takes most of my concentration not to lose her. Alright, well, I've just recorded that for, for half an hour, so I think I'll leave that there. Don't want it to be too long of a video. Yeah, like I said earlier, I'm very impressed with it so far. Um, I think it is one of those times where it does justify uh, a more expensive price tag. $25 may still be too much. Uh, I don't know how long it is though. So you know if it's like a 30 hour game and it's all fully voiced, then I think 25 bucks is is perfectly reasonable. If it's only a few hours though, like some are, um, then you know 20 bucks would probably be a bit more reasonable. Um, but I don't actually know how long it is. I think the main thing I like about it so far is the sheer amount of choices. That's a problem I have with quite a few visual novel games there just aren't that many choices um but yeah this one you know it makes you feel like you are actually interacting with the game uh which is what you're supposed to be doing with visual novel games so yeah very impressed with it so far ace academy thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you guys later bye
I can see the back of the cards though, and if I flip- Oh, I can see those in the back, right? You can't see them. <laughs> you cannot see these? The one that you, yeah, you played to Look, me, I I'm can't coming see on my own balls. 